When former NYPD officer Peter Liang shot and killed unarmed Akai Gurley in a dark public housing stairwell back in 2014, tensions between the police and the community reached an all-time high. When a jury found Liang guilty in February, Gurley's family praised the court for bringing them justice. But new developments call the results of Liang's trial into question. Liang's lawyers allege that one of the jurors lied to get on the jury by giving a different answer to a similar question posed that same day during jury selection for another trial for which he was not chosen. When asked by the New York Daily News for a comment on this development after court transcripts showed potential inconsistencies, the juror in question, Michael Vargas, responded, quote, at this point, the only person I want to talk to is the judge. So what does all of this, this new report, mean for the sentencing of Liang? It was originally set for April 14th. And could there be a retrial for the former NYPD officer? Christina Carrega Woodby, a reporter for the New York Daily News, has been following the case and was the first to report on the apparent inconsistencies in Vargas's responses. She joins us now for an exclusive look at the latest development in the Peter Liang trial. Christina, nice to have you here with us. So what was it that got you to start digging into this juror? Well, I first interviewed him after the verdict to find out, like, how they came to this conclusion, because it was a bombshell conclusion. Nobody thought manslaughter was going to be the actual verdict for Peter Liang. So when I spoke to him, I had a long, lengthy conversation with him, and he gave me a nice play-by-play -play of what they did and how they spelled out everything and got the whole jury to come to this one conclusion, and that was what it was. And after that conversation, I just, you know, took a lot of the notes down and kept it in my draft file and left it there. But then when the district attorney made his recommendation for no jail time for Peter Liang, you know... Which got a lot of court, attention, by the right, way. From both sides, activists, family. And I thought, you know, after covering what those reactions were, what did the jurors think about this recommendation? You know, they put a lot of time and effort to this trial, almost a month and a half. And when I called Mr. Vargas and got his reaction, he was very honest with me. And he said, you know, if it was any other Tom, Dick, and Harry in the street, they would have been um, convicted and sentenced to up to 15 years in prison. So he didn't like the notion of, of this proposal by the, the, the district attorney saying, we're not going to look for jail time for this guy? The, the juror, Michael Vargas, didn't like that? No, he was not for it. He felt that their time was wasted. So he then went on to tell me, that, well, my father went to prison for manslaughter for shooting his friend by accident. And now, I'm assuming your reporter antennae all of a sudden goes up and says, wait a minute, what was your first thought? I was on the landline, so I kind of, like, looked at the phone and was like, I'm sorry, what? Your father did what? And he repeated it again. And he was like, you know, I, my family lied to me about it, told me my dad was in the Army. And I was about eight years old when all this happened. And a social worker said, you want to go see your father? And he said, yeah, we're going to go to an army base. And he was all excited about it. And the social worker was like, no, your father's in prison. And that's when he learned the truth about his dad. But he was never close with his father, estranged his whole life. But, but the bottom line here was he did not disclose that during the jury selection. Process. No, he did not. I didn't recall hearing that. And obviously, the defense did not recall hearing that either. So they now have, you know, here, here's the procedure for people who are following this. They have stepped in and said, wait a minute, before we do sentencing, before we do any of this, we want this verdict thrown out mm -hmm. on the, the basis that a juror was not honest with us. And that could have had an impact on our decision to keep that juror, could have had an impact on the entire trial. So they filed that motion. Uh, has, at this point in time, has, has the juror testified at all, or do we know if the juror will be called before the judge to answer questions under oath? Well, the motion that the that defense had put in was a second motion. They already had one pending for insufficient evidence. Right. Which is a standard. I mean, you do standard. that, as you know, you've been around the system. You do that after any conviction. Correct. But when they put this new one in, there, the last line was, we are asking you, Judge, to order a hearing to call Mr. Vargas so he can testify on the record about the allegations. And I, I, th the next big part of the story is, again, you're digging, and you discover that the same day he was chosen for the Liang trial, he was on a panel where he was not chosen earlier, but he gave a different answer. Correct. To that same question. That question basically, judges always ask you or any family member, close person, been the victim of a crime, been sentenced to a crime. What, how did he respond the first time? The first time, that judge asked the question just as you stated, and he outright said, 
you know, my father went to prison. I'm not really sure of the details. I believe it was manslaughter. And when I read that in the transcript, I was like, oh, boy. Second time around, when he's asked that same question, his answer is what this time? It was, a very, it was differently worded. Um, the judge in the Liang case asked, do you have any close family members or people that you know that's ever been accused or convicted of a crime? And I think Mr. Vargas's reasons was he was estranged from his father, so he did not respond the same way he did just hours before. Final question for you. Where do we stand right now in terms of scheduling for the case? Well, we're on for April 14th. Um, we'll see what the prosecutors are going to do, because they have to answer that motion the defense has filed. And the sentencing may not happen. All right. Christina Correga would be, as I said, exceptional reporting. And maybe we'll talk again as we move forward on this. Thanks for spending some time with us. Thanks for having you me. Take care.